4.1 Interactive Assignment Objective 3. For the following data set, we want to draw a scatter diagram, compute the correlation coefficient, and comment on the type of relation that appears to exist between x and y. The first thing we want to do is we want to draw a scatter diagram. In order to do that, over here at the data set, we're going to go ahead and select Open in StatCrunch. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we want to create a stat scatter plot. So we're going to select graph and then go down to scatter plot. We're going to make sure our x variable is x and the y variable is y. And then make sure that the next thing is that the points is highlighted, which it is. And then we're going to select compute. Okay, so here is our graph. Now I want you to notice that the x-axis goes from 2 to 8 and the y-axis starts from 1.4 to 2.4. So if we take a look at this first part A, you can see that the x-axis goes from 0 to 4, so we can already eliminate this one here. Okay, and then we're going to look at B, and that also goes in the x-axis from 0 to 4, so that doesn't match with what we have here. So it's going to be dec decided between C and D. Now, if we take a look at this, Okay, C has a situation where it is a positive, it's going up from left to right. And D, it is going down from left to right, which is a negative situation. Well, if we look at our graph here, we can see that it's going up, therefore we're going to select C as our graph. Okay, next what we want to do is we want to compute the correlation coefficient. So for this example, we're going to do it by hand. And then eventually after that, then we'll be doing using it using technology. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we need to figure out, okay, what is the uh, mean of the variable x column and the standard deviation and the mean for the y's in the standard deviation. So we're going to select stat, summary stats, and then go to columns. We're going to select both x and then y. And then we're going to select the mean and the standard deviation and then select compute. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and then copy this information. Okay, so now what I've done here is I've created a table. Okay, and this table has X, which are all my X values, and here's all my Y values. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a new column, which is X bar. And X bar represents the mean for X. And if we look at the mean for X, it is 6.2. So we're going to put in all the values for 6.2 in for each particular space for X bar. Okay, and then if we make another column, we're going to call this the standard deviation for X. We're going to round that to six decimal places. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and put a zero at the end of this. Okay, so let me make sure that that is in there. So we want to make sure that we have our zero. So it's 3.033150. And we're going to put our standard deviation in for each one of these. So the zero would be at the end if we're rounding it to six decimal places. Okay, and then the next thing that we're going to do is we need to find this value. We got to take the value of x, subtract the mean, and then divide it by the standard deviation. So let's go ahead and do that. We know that our data value is 2. Okay, and we know that our mean for our x values is 6.2, and then we're going to divide it by the standard deviation, okay, which is going to give us negative 1.384699. And we're going to do the same thing. The value of 4, we're going to subtract the mean of 6.2, and then divide it by the standard deviation to get the next value. And same, 8, take the data value. Subtract the mean, divide it by the standard deviation to give us this value. Next, we're taking the value of x, subtract the mean of x, divide it by the standard devi devi deviation of x to give us this result. And then the last, we're going to take the value of 9, and then we're going to subtract the mean of the values of x, divided by the standard deviation of x to give you this value. Okay, now we're going to work with our y values. So we're going to move over. So now we're going to put the y mean in. Well, the y mean is what we get from our summary statistics. So the y mean here is going to be 1.96. So 
So we're going to put 1.96 in all of that table there. Okay, and then we want to put in our standard deviation of y. Well, our standard deviation of y rounded to six decimal places is 0.427785. So we're going to put that in here. So now we can get rid of this information because we know what that is. We put this information in here. And now we're going to do, do the same thing for the y values. We're going to subtract the y mean and divide by the y standard deviation. So we're taking the y value of 1.4 and then we're going to subtract the y mean of 1.96 and divide by the standard deviation of y. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take 1.7, subtract the y mean of 1.96 and then divide it by the standard deviation to get us these values. Okay, next we're going to take 2.0 which is the data value for y. We're going to subtract the y mean divided by the standard deviation of y to give us this result. Okay, and likewise, we're going to take the next data value of 2.2. We're going to subtract the mean of the y values divided by the standard deviation of the y values to give us this problem here, this number here. And then we're going to take our last data value for y, which is 2.5. We're going to subtract the y mean divided by the standard deviation of y to give us this result. So again, all we're doing here is making sure that, again, this represents the mean for the y's, these represent the mean for the x values, and then we know that this is the standard deviations for both the x and then y. Okay, now what do we do in the last column? Well, in the last column, we need to take the two values here and multiply them together. So we're going to take negative 1.38, and then multiply it by this value, and then that's going to give us the total here of 1.81266. Okay, likewise, we're going to take the next two values and multiply them together to give us 0.44036. Next, we're going to take these two values to get this number here. And then we're going to do the same thing to the last two. Okay, we're going to take these two values to get this result. And then these two values to get this result. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add these all up and we're going to find the sum of that. And when we find the sum of that, it's going to give us 3.807217. And now we're going to come down here and look at our formula. So the numerator for the linear correlation coefficient is going to be what we got over here, which is 3.807217. Okay, and then what we need to do is we need to figure out what is the sample size, because the sample size is going to be the value of n. Well, if we take a look here, we have 1, two, three, four, five ordered pairs, which means that the sample size is five. So we're gonna take a look at that sample size, okay, and that's gonna give us five. So if we take the numerator divided by five minus one, it gives us 0 0.9518. Rounding this to three decimal places gives us 0 0.952. Now going back to our assignment, we're gonna put in the answer 0 0.952. Okay, now what type of relation appears to exist between x and y? Well, the linear correlation coefficient is close to positive 1, not negative 1 or 0. So therefore, a positive linear relation exists between x and y.